Welcome one and all on this beautiful Friday night to GCU Softball Stadium. My name is Dominic Hinton alongside Cheyenne Rose. Here to bring you another game of GCU Women's Softball. We have the Utah State Aggies coming to visit the Grand Canyon University Antelopes. As Mickey Carverubio has dug in in the first pitch to her, second pitch to her, excuse me. It is one and one as that one is in there for a strike. Apologize for kind of rushing this start. It's one game back to another. This is the second game for the Lopes in this weekend's Purple Classic tournament. Carver Rubio fouls that one back. Count is now one and two. And we got softball going late into the night for you here tonight and then all day tomorrow and uh, all day Sunday as well. So if you like softball, this is the perfect weekend for that here in Phoenix. Beautiful GCU softball stadium. That pitch just a bit outside to Carver Rubio. Count now even at two and two. Carver Rubio, the lead off batter for the Lopes, one of the freshman phenoms that has really emerged in this early season so far. Even in the last game, even with that Lopes loss, Kavarubia having some great timely hitting there for the Lopes. Absolutely, is that one a shot foul. Kavarubio coming into this weekend has a team best 394 average. So she is very hot, hitting the ball, seeing it very well, spreading it all over. But she's also become a dominant force in the outfield, becoming an everyday center fielder for the Lopes. As this pitch... That one is skied toward left field, and Aggie is there to make that catch. And one away in the top of this first inning. The Lopes, of course, being a tournament, they are the designated away team. The right fielder, number four. So the Lopes getting their first at-bats here. Reed also had an impressive outing in that previous game against Drake, having some good hits, helping string along some of those six runs that the Lips were able to score. Absolutely, as the first pitch to Reed is outside for ball one, count one and oh now. Yeah, Jaden Reed, another really impressive freshman. She's right behind Carver Rubio with a 310 batting average. She's got great speed on the base path. Kind of becoming a usual position player over at second base. Now having a 2 0 count with one out here in the top of the first. Very good, uh, very good eye there, seeing the ball well. As the 2 0 pitch is on, that one is high, ball three. So now, Jaden Reed. Now has a 3-0 count. Lopes looking to get their first base runner in for this game. Again, the Lopes dropping that last one not too long ago. As that pitch is in there. A little bit of movement on that one. Strike one. Reed now got a hitter's count at 3-1. and one. Yeah, just about uh, 30 minutes ago was that last game. Yeah. We are not going anywhere, folks. We are here to give you all the action on GCU TV this weekend. Again, bringing you the Purple Classic, the 3-1 pitch. That one lifted in the shallow left. Again, left fielder doing a little bit of work. Has the second out right there as Reed flies out to left field. The first baseman, number 27. So now the first baseman, Lily Bishop, is going to get a crack here. She homered in that last game, really started uh, the offense up for the Lopes. Big power, great first base skills. As that first pitch to her is in there for a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, Bishop last game gave the Lopes their first run with that solo shot back in the bottom of the third. Also made a couple impressive 
Plays on defense at first base. A couple of really good picks. And the 0-1 pitch to Bishop. That one is cracked on the right side of the diamond. Going to be good for a single. So Bishop got herself first hit of this ball game for GCU. She's aboard with two outs. Runner on first. Lopes able to get that base runner a lot earlier than in that previous game, as we mentioned. So it's really nice for the Lopes being able to have that in the top of the first here to get that momentum going as Absolutely. they had it in that last. Absolutely. Good to see him swinging the bat. Savannah Turville digs in. First pitch to her. That one outside for a strike. Looked like she thought about going, but held up. Torville, the sophomore out of Whittier, California, had herself a great 2019 season. Put together a uh, a nice second team, or first team all whack, I should say. Actually, excuse me, as that pitch to her is uh, is a ball. Count goes to one and one. But yeah, first team all whack for the Lopes last year. Before the season, she was uh, honored with getting a preseason all whack nod. So a big season ahead for Savannah Turville, the sophomore. As the 1-1 one -one pitch to her is swung on. Looks like it was tapped, fouled back. Count going to go to 1-2. and two. So again, as we said, not too long ago, GCU unfortunately dropped that game against Drake University. Lopes looking to bounce back here. Lopes still trying to break that now five game losing streak. Now being two and ten on their season so far. Now I'll tell you what, that is that pitch is outside. Count goes to two and two with two outs and a runner on first. I'll tell you what, they've got great pitching. Their pitchers have really held them in so far. Had a great weekend last weekend. Yessie Morrison got seven Ks last Sunday. She came out early in the last game versus Drake earlier today. That one is outside. Count's going to go to full. Good eye there by Torville. Not to chase that one, low and away. But, yeah, their, uh, their offense, Cheyenne, definitely needs to pick up a little bit, not supporting their pitchers. But I believe, I believe they definitely can. They've got the squad to do it. And the full count pitch, Turville. That one is swung on, fouled. Nice little chop there. Turville fending it off. So 3-2. Two. two outs, runner on first. Lily Bishop, the first baseman. On the first hit of the ball game, she's sitting on first right now. For the Lopes, she'll be running on this pitch, I believe. At a full count, you really got it here if you're Bishop. Absolutely. So she's going to get ready to get moving as soon as that ball leaves the pitcher's hand. The wind up, the pitch, 3-2 pitch is skied. Yeah, it's going to go foul, but it looks like the third baseman for the Aggies has it. Going to reel it in, and that's going to do it for the Lopes. We've seen the first four batters through the first half of the inning. With one runner left on first base, that's going to do it. Yep, and it's time for the upcoming schedule brought to you by BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. Tomorrow, women's basketball will play their final game at home against Utah Valley at 2 p.m. The Purple Classic continues with softball at 3 p.m. when the Lopes take on Drake once again. And then baseball will end the day to face Fordham at 6 p.m. And you can catch it all here on GCU TV. And as we mentioned, there is a lot of sports going on this weekend for GCU Athletics. Men's volleyball topped number eight UCLA in four sets. Baseball still currently going on just a little bit down the way at Brazel Field. Lopes are down by three to CSUN as a five to two game there at Brazel. With no outs and nobody on, with Drew Smith starting that one off there for the Lopes. So hopefully baseball can get that rally going. Baseball starting off their season great, taking that a series win against Oklahoma State. 
And then, as we mentioned, that uh, basketball game with the women's basketball team who currently sits at first place in the WAC. So a lot of great sports going on this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. A big weekend for sports here at GCU. Got them all here for you at GCU TV. And number 16, Stephanie Reed is going to be stepping in for the Utah State Aggies, leading off the bottom of this first inning here. As the first pitch to her is swung on. Torville's got it. She's going to throw across the diamond in time. Heck of a throw there. Great arm by Savannah Torville to get the first out for the Lopes. And also great play there by Bishop being able to get that and staying there on first to record that out. So a great teamwork there by Torville and Bishop. And first pitch there, outside for a ball. Pitcher for the Lopes, the freshman left-hander, Sidney Sahar from Peoria, Arizona, getting the start today, this evening, I should say. So her next pitch is high and out of play. Foul ball, count goes to one and one. Riley Pogger, senior outfielder. That bat for the Aggies, that pitch to her outside. Pogger now having a two and one count, so Sahar needs to come back and just kind of calm down a little bit here in the first. Nobody on, one out, so good outing so far here. That one fouled. Count goes to two and two with one out. So the call for that last one was an illegal pitch. That'll go for a ball, so that'll bring the count to to three and one. And the three-one pitch. That one off the glove. Off the glove of Dietrich there, so that will allow the batter to and plugger to get safely to first. So one out and one on there. Dietrich could not field it cleanly, but did a great job as third baseman, keeping the ball in front of her, not allowing it to go any farther. No harm, no foul so far. Double play is set up for Sahar. So McFarland is the batter for the Aggies. First pitch to her. Inside for a strike. Good looking pitch right there. 0 1 count. One out. Runner on first. That one swung on and missed by McFarland. McFarland not too happy with uh, her self swinging at that one there. Sahar with a good looking pitch there. Kind of confused uh, McFarland a little bit. McFarland the freshman from Rockland, California. That one swung on and missed as well. That's gonna be strike three. And the Lopes strikeout. Good enough for the first of the game. Sydney Sahar punches her first K right there. The shortstop, number one, Lexi Orozco. Now batting for the Aggies, number one, Lexi Orozco. Right 
First pitch to Orozco. In there for a strike. Good to see Sidney Sahar on the mount tonight. The freshman for the Lopes, Peoria, Arizona. So far in this young season, a 6-2-4 ERA. Ball outside. Count goes to 1-1. One one. She's got six strikeouts on the year, four appearances, three starts so far. Sydney Sahar looking to get things rolling for the Lopes. Count is 1-1. One and one. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. Runner on first base. Sahar delivers. That pitch is hit. It is skied back and back. And they're going to watch. that one is gone. They're going to watch that one sail over the right field wall here at GCU Stadium. A nice two-out home run for the Utah State Aggies. You could tell that that one was gone right when it came off her bat. Absolutely. Good. Just high and far. Definitely, like, no doubt in your mind that that was going to go over that wall there Definitely. for Utah State. Definitely. That was Lexi Orozco, the infielder. The sophomore out of San, Mar San Marcos, California. Taking Sydney Sahar for a ride a little bit there. Sydney Sahar will shake that one off. Still got two outs here in the bottom of the first. As that ball just getting away there from Holland, but able to get back. So now that count going to one and oh. And Mackenzie McFarlane. Up to bat, that pitch to her gets away. Count goes to two and oh. So two McFarland sisters here on this Utah State Aggies roster, both from Rockland, California, Northern California natives. 2-0 pitch, out one, looked a little low. Ball's gonna go to three and oh, so three straight balls to Mackenzie McFarlane. Again, her twin sister Maisie was up to bat earlier this inning. And that pitch to Mackenzie is in there for a strike as the count goes to three and one. Mackenzie McFarlane plays both catcher and first base for the Aggies. Maisie plays outfield. One's a right-hander, one's a left-hander. The little things to tell the uh, twins twins apart there. But she's going to go ahead and get get that walk. So we got a fresh count here to Gabriela Jimenez for the Aggies as looks like there's a but uh, confusion there. But nonetheless, again, a fresh count to Jimenez. That one in there for a strike. A nice pitch there from Zahar. So count goes to one and one as it looks like a little confusion. Might have been called an illegal pitch, turned into a ball. So one and one with the runner on first, the pitch. That one fouled back, count goes to one and two. So Sydney Sahar looking to end this inning, limit the damage and uh, let the Lopes go to work. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Second strikeout of the inning for Sahar, and that's going to finish it. Oh, at the end of one inning, the Utah State Aggies lead two to nothing.
and left a runner on base. We got a lot more softball, a lot more GCU softball coming back for you after this break. We'll be right back. teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders, you're giving them the tools they need to succeed. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back inside GCU Softball Stadium. A beautiful night here. Friday night, February 21st. Thank you guys for joining us. If you guys have been with us so far, you have seen the Lopes are down at the top of the second inning. 2-0 behind the Utah State Aggies. But Olivia Zufelt, another one of those freshman phenoms, is going to dig in to lead off for the Lopes this inning. Hopefully get something started and get those runs back. felt the freshman out of Hayden, Idaho. First pitch to her. That one is low and outside for ball one. So Zufelt, one of those freshman standouts we've been talking about. The Lopes have four so far that they've integrated into their regular lineup. As pitch to Zufelt is chopped foul. Count goes to one and one, no outs here at the top of the first. Zufel has been impressive. She uh, came in as a pinch hitter in her opening weekend and has found herself as the Lopes designated player, hitting into the heart of their lineup. She's batting fifth tonight. Doing a great job hitting so far. As the one one pitch to her is skied. Looks like it's gonna be foul and out of play. So count goes to one and two. Zufelt has really, really done good this year. She has a team high of eight RBIs on the season and three doubles coming into this GCU Purple Classic. Pair of home runs so far this year, including a walk-off one last weekend. So do not mess with these freshmen here at GCU as the one-two pitch to her is way outside. Looks like it got away from... Uh, the pitcher, pitching for the Utah State Aggies, Alyssa Noble. So that one got away from her. Count goes to two and two with no outs here. Top of the sec. And two two pitch. That one a bit high and outside. Count's gonna go full. So great eyesight here, and great IQ from Zufelt. Seeing the ball well, working the count. Taking a couple hacks. And the full count pitch here. That one ripped well into right field, but playable enough for the right fielder, Plogger. And that's gonna be the first out for the Lopes. Coming to back now for the Lopes is the junior catcher, Kaylee Holland. She had herself a good game earlier today against Drake. So the first pitch to Holland. That one drilled right to center field. I thought it was going to drop there, but it looked like a couple Aggies Even hit each other. Even with that slight collision, he was able to hold on to that ball. Absolutely. That was almost a no man's land. A ball, I guess I spoke too soon. Not really drilled, just kind of a 
shallow plop fly right there in the no man's land behind uh, second base and center field, but center fielder making that grab there. Nice work from multiple Aggies running in to try and make that catch even with that slight Absolutely. collision. Kristen Fifield's going to dig in. Another one of those phenomenal freshmen. First pitch to her is on the corner for a strike. Yeah, Fifield having a good day so far, hoping to get some hits here in the second game of our doubleheader, and even more so on the weekend. And that pitch to her is outside, going to bring the count to one and one. So yeah, Kristen Fifield mispronounced her name a little bit ago. Sorry about that. She's been bouncing between shortstop and second base. Another one of those freshmen standout starting to find her groove as she picked up her first career hit in a GCU uniform last week. As the 1-1 pitch to her is high, count's going to go to 2-1. and one. And Sunday, she actually had her first multi-hit game against Western Illinois, game GCU dropped in extras. But nonetheless, she had herself a career day, earned herself a pretty regular spot in this lineup. So that 2-1 count to Fifield is now a 3-1 and one count after that last pitch. So Fifield got herself a nice little situation here, sitting at 3-1 and one with two outs in the top of the second inning, trying to get something going here for the Lopes. Just trying to chip away that 2 nothing lead that Utah State currently has. So the 3-1 pitch to Fifield. That one's outside. Fifield's going to go ahead and get a walk. GC will have its first base runner of the inning, so five field to go to first. Now up to bat is Gianna Nicoletti, sophomore outfielder. A left fielder, number 24, Gianna Nicoletti. Nicoletti finding herself in left field tonight. Seen her make a couple pretty good highlight plays so far in this young season out in the outfield. Pitch to Nicoletti. First one is a ball. It's going to be low. Ball one. And it looks like we're going to get a little coaches meeting at the mount. So Gianna Nicoletti, a lot of speed here at the plate. Coming into the weekend, she was three for three in steals versus attempts. She had one earlier today versus Drake. So a speedy player, dominant on the base path. It looks like pitcher's getting set. And we are getting ready for the 1-0 pitch. So Alyssa Noble digs in to deliver the pitch for the Utah, Utah State Aggies. And the pitch by Noble to Nicoletti. That one is chopped right up the middle. No play anywhere. A good piece of hitting there by Nicoletti. She was too speedy for them to throw her out at first. And Fifield had a good enough jump that she was able to get to second in time. So nothing really that uh, Orozco, the shortstop, could do for Utah State there, but eat it. So we got ourselves a little rally. We had two on, two out. Shortstop, or excuse me, Kaylee Dietrich is up to bat. The junior right-handed hitter. First pitch is in for a strike there for Dietrich. So now an 0 and 1 count with two on and two out with one in running scoring position. Excuse me. And now the second pick to Dietrich is outside. It's like Alyssa Noble lost it a little bit there. Kaylee Dietrich had herself a nice nice game, too, against Drake earlier today. Getting the start at third base. And the pitch. And that pitch to her is in there for a strike. Count now goes to one and two. Two outs, two runners on. Top of the second. 
will get set. Deliver the pitch. That one is outside. So we got ourselves twos all around here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on. All for Kaylee Dietrich. Let's see if she can do something here. In the top of the second inning. One more two. And the pitch. That one is crushed, but foul. Seeing that power there from Dietrich. Showing that really anything can turn this game with one swing of a bat with a hit like that. Absolutely. Just a little bit late on that one. She gets her timing right. She hits that one right over the wall. Still early on in this ball game. Top of the second. 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside. She's going to draw a full count here. Good eye there by Kaylee Dietrich not to not to chase. And that's the one thing that I, one of the many things actually that I admire about these lopes. They don't chase a lot of, a lot of pitches. They like to drive the pitch counts of opposing kit pitchers up. Drive up to full counts. Make them throw to them as a 3-2 pitch. Is in for a ball. Ball four. Wasn't sure if it was going to be called a strike late or not. But... That's going to be ball four as bases are now loaded. Two outs. Number six, Mickey and up steps the center fielder, the freshman, Mickey Cavarubio. Dangerous hitter here for the Lopes. So great person in this position having the bases loaded. Absolutely. She's got a team leading batting average. The first pitch to her is up. And it's going to be called for a strike. Yeah, she's leading the team. She came in this weekend with a 394 batting average. She earned herself a spot last weekend in the Getterman Classic All-Tournament team for performance down in Texas. Really just having a good start to the season for this freshman. Earned herself a regular starting spot in center field. The 0-1 pitch is fouled back. and to be 0-2. So the Lopes, a little opportunity to crack something open here, get on the board. Got bases loaded. Two outs, two strikes to Mickey Covarubio. As the pitcher for Utah State, Alyssa Noble. She winds up, delivers the pitch. That one is high. Count's going to go to one and two. So Alyssa Noble for the Utah State Aggies. She's coming into this game with a 4.77 ERA. Nine strikeouts on the season. Pitch to Cova Rubio. That one is slapped up and back. And that one is a good catch there. Made in left field by McFarlane. So a good catch there. Was going to go ahead and end the inning. And and the scoring opportunity as they leave the bases loaded, three runners stranded, and uh, no runs at the end of two and a half. Utah State is up two to nothing. Attend the Conference on Faith and Science this weekend at Grand Canyon University. Discover more about our creator through the lens of science, technology, engineering, and math. If you can't attend in person, GCU TV will be streaming the conference live. That will be taking place February 21st and 22nd so that is tonight and tomorrow and if you are unable to even watch the streams live they'll be there to stay on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash GCU so what you're telling me is GCU TV doesn't just bring you sports that is in fact what I'm telling you we, we do it all we do it all bring you bring you anything happening on campus that we can Bringing you a faith-filled conference tonight and tomorrow. We've got the TEDx here on campus. We've got sports all weekend. But right here, right now, we are here at the bottom of the second inning here at GCU Softball Stadium as the Lopes are looking to uh, have a quick inning here to get back up to bat, destroy this two-run deficit. But up to bat for... Uh, for the Utah State Aggies is the first baseman, Kennedy Hira. She's going to dig in. Yeah. 
And the first pitch to Hira is fouled but caught, so it's going to go in strike number one. Sydney Sahara still out there in the circle for GCU. Two strikeouts so far. Oh, and that one is going to hit Hira. She's going to take first base. I don't think that one was intentional. Just got slipped out of the hand a little bit of Sydney Sahara. Good to see that uh, Hira's all right. She makes it down to first. The second baseman, number 22, Ryan Holmes. And so it looks like number 22, Ryan Holmes, the second baseman for the Aggies, is going to dig in. Fresh set of... Uh, Balls and strikes, got a runner on first base, and no outs here at the bottom of the second. And the pitch, that one's outside for a ball. So, 1-0 to Holmes. And Holmes, the... Arizona native out of Queen Creek, Arizona. The 1-0 pitch to her. That one is swung on, fielded, bobbled by Torville, and nothing will come of it. Torville keeps it in front of her, but unfortunately is unable to come up with the play. That would, uh, could have been a double play there for the Lopes, but just uh, unable to keep that ball in play there in front of Torville. And that's going to bring up the senior, Alana Alvarado, for the Aggies. She's going to dig in with the runner on first and second. No outs here at the bottom of the second. So the first pitch to Alvarado. It's going to be in there for a strike. The Aggies in a position right now to do a little bit of damage. Extend their lead. If you weren't here, in the bottom of the first inning, hit a two-run shot to put them up. And that pitch is going to be a strike, so count goes to 0 and 2. Two straight strikes from Sydney Sahir, the freshman pitcher for GCU. And the 0-2 pitch, just a bit outside. The count's going to go to 1 and 2. <laughs> and that's going to be strike three for Sydney Sahar. She's got herself three strikeouts through two innings so far. Good looking pitch there. Made Alvarado miss. And now the leadoff man for the Aggies is up. Sydney Reed, 0 for 1 so far. She's looking for her first hit. And that pitch to her is drilled in line. It's going to go right to the left field wall. One run is going to score. Two runs are in for the Aggies. The throw to the plate, not in time. And that allows her to advance to third on that as the Lopes were worried about the runs coming in to score. So now so advancing on that third at third. Great heads up base running there by Sydney Reed. Lands her at third base with one out. As she drives in two runs there off of uh, Sydney Sahar. And now up to bait, up to bat, excuse me, is Riley Plogger, the outfield, the senior for the Aggies. <laughs> Left-handed batter. She's 0 for 1 today. So that first pitch to her is delivered for a strike. And that pitch is fouled, so count's quickly going to go to 0-2. The one out and a runner on third. So Sydney Sahar pitching good so far. 
Pitching good. Aggies are hitting good as well. Now a 4-0 lead there for the Aggies. And the 0-2 pitch outside. That's going to be ball one. Count's going to go to one and two with one out. A runner on third here at the bottom of the second. The Lopes so far this season have earned both of their wins off walk-off home runs by freshmen. That just shows you how much the freshman has impacted the game. Is that freshman right there gets a strikeout inside corner. Sydney Sahar with her fourth strikeout. In two innings. And that's going to bring out the first McFarland sister, Maisie McFarland, both from Rockland, California, graduating from Whitney High School. That's the first pitch to her. Outside for a strike. Painted that quarter nicely, did Sahar. Sydney Sahar, another one of those phenomenal freshmen coming in, becoming an essential part of this GCU lineup. And the pitch outside. It's like the same spot there for 0 and 2. So 0 and 2, two outs, and a runner on third. It's hard trying to limit the damage. Get the Lopes up back to bat. And the pitch, a little bit low. Count's going to go to 1 and 2. Sydney Sahar so far, a nice start to her season. So far. Appeared in four games, 11 strikeouts, four here tonight. That one just a bit outside. Nice work by Holland there, being able to keep that ball in front of her to not allow that runner on third to end up scoring there. Yeah, absolutely, the count's going to go to two and two. So two, two, and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here, the bottom of the second. As the pitch, that one over the head of Sahar is going to score a run. The throw not in time. And it looks like it was off the foot of Bishop. So hopefully she's all right as she's going back to first. But that drives in a run as Aggies extend their lead 5 nothing over the Lopes. So Lily Bishop at first base. A little bit of an awkward throw to her. A little bit of an awkward reception there. She's all good. So it looks like the uh, umpire is going to be cleaning off the pitcher's mount there. Letting the rubber show. The shortstop, Lexi and Roscoe. Sydney Sahara is going to Get ready to deliver the first pitch to the shortstop, Lexi Orozo. The pitch to her is in there for a strike. Count 0 and 1, two outs, runner on first. Lexi Orozo, one for one so far. She was on board and scored during that home run. And the pitch, that one drilled all the way over the wall, but foul actually comes back into play. Nice break there for the Lopes. Absolutely. Already down that from one, three runs in this inning, so. It was a moonshot foul. Yeah. So Rosa shown she's got a little bit of power. I've seen her make a couple nice plays at shortstop so far in this game. And the Utah State Aggies. Lead 5 nothing. So, Sydney Sahir is going to deliver the 0-2 pitch. That one swung on and missed by Arozo. Sydney Sahir gets herself out of the inning. But not before more damage is done. Three runs scored 
to advance the score for the Utah State Aggies to five to nothing through two innings. Don't go anywhere. We've got more GCU softball coming back for you after this break. Came through dripping, drip, drip. 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 Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back. So good to have you here. It's going to be the top of the third inning here at GCU Stadium. The second game for the Lopes in this Purple Classic. We got a weekend full of softball here for you, but right now, it looks like it's going to be the right fielder, Jaden Reed, stepping in. The freshman, another one of those great freshman players. It's worked their way into the heart of the lineup here for GCU, or the top of the lineup, I should say. She's the second batter of the lineup, the leadoff here of the top of the third inning. The first pitch to her outside for a ball, outside and low. Jaden Reed having herself a nice, nice start to this season. She is right behind Cova Rubio coming into this weekend for batting average. Batting 310. And the 1-0 pitch to her is swung on in the gap. That one is going to be caught by McFarland on the run. So a great defensive play by the Aggies. Saves them a couple bases. No doubt in my mind that uh, Jalen Reed would have been to second, if not rounding second, the first base if that would have hit the wall in the warning track. Yeah, but great, great piece of hitting there by Reed, but a, an amazing catch there by McFarland. And just great speed there to make that catch. Absolutely, stretched out, made that. Now we got one away. It's Lily Bishop digs in the first pitch to her outside. I don't know, Lily Bishop, quite the power hitter. Batting third in this lineup. The junior playing first base, getting the start there. Had a great game against Drake earlier today. Homered. Some good defensive plays as the 1-0 pitch to her. Outside, low, 2-0. She really got the offense started, gave them the spark they needed against Drake. Total team had 11 hits. So offense really went to work against Drake. Unfortunately, it was not enough as they dropped that game. And the pitch to her is good as she smacks that one into right field for a base hit. So a heck of a piece of hitting there to fend that one off and get the Lopes' first base runner of this inning. Yeah, nice hit there by Bishop into right. And it looks like we will have a pinch runner there for the Lopes in Bellavia. Pinch runner at first base for GCU, number 15, Christine Bellavia. So number 15, Christine Bellavia is going to get to show us her wheels a little bit. She's on first with no outs. Oh, excuse me, she's on first with one out in the top of this third inning. Savannah Turville digs in. The first pitch to her is in there for a strike. So count goes to 0-1. Turville, the sophomore shortstop, coming a pretty regular shortstop for the Lopes. Alyssa Noble. Pitcher for Utah is going to 
Pitch right to Torville. That one's right back to Novo. She's going to go to second. On to first. Double play. Aggies roll them up and get a pair there as they end the inning for the Lopes. Good play by Alyssa Noble to recognize that. And a great play and great throw by Roscoe, the sh shortstop for the Aggies. So after three and a half innings, the score remains 5-0. Five to nothing in favor of the Utah State Aggies as the Lopes leave one on that inning. You know, Dom, we mentioned a lot of great things going on campus this weekend, but Grand Canyon University Arena is proud to host Elevate 2020 Music Festival back in Phoenix for the eighth straight year. So join us this June for a great weekend of worship. Tickets are on sale now at gcuarena.com. So not only do we have great athletics going on, pretty much all year round. We have a lot of other great events going on here on the GCU campus. Always, always active here in Lope Country. Elevate 2020, June 27th to the 28th. Chris Tomlin will be there. Casting Crowns will be there. Matthew West will be there. You do not want to miss this. If you are into good worship music and a beautiful arena, this is perfect for you. Go ahead and get your tickets to Elevate 2020. Always something going on here. Def definitely always have a lot of action going around here in Lope Country. The Lope life is live, as the kids say. Or, or should I say, should the kids say, the Lope, the Lope life is lit? Is, lit? is that still a thing? Is I that feel still old. A thing? I don't know. I don't know. Do kids say that? I don't know. I got your... You Number kids eight. and your tic, McKinsey you kids and your tic tacs and whatever you guys do TikToks. online. TikToks. TikToks. I love TikTok. <laughs> and we're gonna go to the bottom of the third right away. Uh, Sydney Sahar delivers that first pitch, and that's gonna be one zero. As that is the other McFarland sister, Mackenzie McFarland. Uh, native to Rockland, California, Northern California. That is my home. I love it. So another NorCal native up to bat. She's got to count 1-0. and oh. And the pitch to her is inside, but good enough for a strike. As soon as her delivers that one with a little bit of movement, count is now 1-1. One and one. And the pitch, that one swung on, Torville's got it, handles it nicely, fields it, throws across the diamond in time to Lily Bishop for out number one. Nice 6-3 uh, play there. Absolutely a good little routine play there for the Lopes. Exactly what they needed to start this inning with an out. So in case you didn't know this. I'm looking at that again from Torville there too, Bishop. Yeah, absolutely a good, nice routine play we see there. As uh, number 26, Jimenez digs in for, uh, for the Aggies. First pitch to her, outside, ball one. So the way the defense is looking right now for the Lopes, we got Dietrich at third, Torville at short, Fifield at second, Bishop at first, Sahara on the mount, and Holland behind the plate, Nicoletti in left, Covarubio in center, and Jalen Jaden Reed in right as that pitch is hit right to excuse, excuse me about that I got caught up that hit it was right to Torville and the throw was just a little bit off Lily Bishop had to come off the bag and did not tag the runner in time so that's good enough for a base hit one out runner on first nice Third. work by Bishop there choosing to get off the bag and catch the ball instead of trying to stay on the bag and let the ball possibly go past her. Absolutely. It goes back to the fundamentals. You can't let that ball go past you and allow a runner to advance to second. So this pitch from Zahar actually hits Hira, the batter for Utah State. So it looks like it's going to be one out and a runner on second and first for the Aggies. So a little bit of trouble here for the freshman, Sydney Zahar. But nonetheless, she's got five strikeouts, and they're going to bring her out of the game, actually, and bring up Lexi Coons Lexi coming Coons. back in. 
who pitched earlier against Drake. So Lexi Coons is going to get a chance to come back in and <coughs> come back in and pitch today, and she's going to take her warm-ups right now. But yeah, Sydney Zahar, not a bad stat line. One earned run, five strikeouts, one ball. Did give up that double and that home run, but overall, pretty good, uh, pretty good performance for Sahar. Sahar, excuse me. Just unfortunately, the Utah State Aggies hitting the ball all over the place. As Utah State is up. Five to nothing here in the bottom of the third with one out. Lexi Coons has taken her her pitches to warm up. Holland's gonna go visit her, make sure she's good. Team is meeting up. Utah State also looking for their first win of the GC Purple Classic tournament as they lost earlier to CSUN eight to seven. So they're six and five currently on the season. And last weekend it should be noted that they went five and zero. Oh in their tournament that they played in. The first time they've gone five and zero oh in a long time. As that pitch is up. Actually, as a matter of fact, they beat Hawaii, Portland State, University of San Diego, UC Davis, and Seton Hall in the Golden State Classic. So they went five and zero, oh, and it's their first time since 1980 doing it on a 5-0 sweep. So props to them as that second pitch is Hit up in the air. Nicoletti is there in left field for the catch. Throwing that back to Torval to keep the runner at second from advancing. She thought about it, but as soon as Nicoletti threw that ball to Torval, she uh, scurried back to second base there. The Good play there. So the designated player for the Aggies, Alana Alvar Alvarado, number 44, the senior. It's going to dig in. She's 0 for 1 today. as Lexi Coons delivers that pitch for a strike. So runners on first and second. Two outs, 0-1 count here in the bottom of the third. And the 0-2 pitch. Inside, it's going to be ball one. Count goes to one and one. So Lexi Coons looking to make sure there's no damage here in this inning. Coming in for relief of Sydney Sahar. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one for a strike. She did go around, the umpire said. Wanted to hold up, but just could not do it. So count goes to one and two with two outs. A runner on first and second. And the one-two pitch. That one rung her up. Strike three, Lexi Coons delivers that one. And limits almost no damage, actually no damage at all in that inning. Lexi Coons did a great job, did what she was supposed to. After three full innings, the score remains five to nothing in favor of the Aggies. So the Aggies leave two men on, first and second. And uh, we're going to get to see the GCU Lopes come up to bat in the next half of this inning. Do not go anywhere. Sanderson Ford has been straight up with our customers for the past 65 years. We've climbed to the top with a no hassle, no pressure, and no nonsense approach to selling Fords. No games, just straight up to provide the most value and best experience for our customers. They support local sports and donate generously to local charities with a strong emphasis on kids and military. If it's important to you to do business with someone who supports our community, choose Sanderson Ford. Straight up. When it came time to look for master's degrees, when I first learned about Grand Canyon, I think as teachers and coaches, you're never done learning. Being a mentor is one of the most important things in my life. 
for me, it's not always about winning. It's about instilling things in my students and my athletes that'll carry them on. And I'm confident to say that I wouldn't be the same teacher or coach that I am today without that experience at, at GCU. I'm Joseph, and I graduated with a master's degree online from GCU. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. And leading off the top of this fourth inning for the Lopes is number 18, Olivia Zufelt. The first pitch to her is in there for a strike. Zufelt, the freshman out of Hayden, Idaho, having a phenomenal start to this season. Couple of home runs. One of the leaders of the team on RBIs. Finding herself in the heart of this lineup, batting fifth tonight. And the 0-1 pitch to her. Outside for strike two. She felt a very disciplined hitter. Likes to see a lot of pitches. Likes to wait back for her pitch. But is also not afraid to go after one. The count is 0-2 with no outs here. Again, top of the fourth inning. And the 0-2 pitch to felt. That one is outside. On the mount for the Aggies. Still Alyssa Noble. Count now one and two to Zufelt. And that one is fouled. So count remains one and two. Zufelt getting a good little chop at that one right there. Alyssa Noble. The senior right-handed pitcher out of Chino, California. Had herself a good game thus far. No strikeouts, two walks, but only given up three hits. And the one-two pitch to Zufelt. And that one is lined into the gap in right field. It's going to be fielded nicely by Plogger out there. And so that's going to hold Zufelt to a single. But nonetheless, the Lopes get a base runner on and the leadoff base runner at that. So no outs, who felt at first. The catcher. And that's going to bring Number up the 12. catcher, Kaylee Holland. Kaylee Holland. So the junior catcher is going to dig in. Had herself a nice day behind the plate today. Holland looking for her first hit here tonight in this game as she's currently 0 for 1 against the Aggies. That one is in there for a strike, so counts now 0 and 1. Holland hoping to do something here. Stu felt on first. Listen, Noble doing a nice job. Has the pitcher for the Aggies. Just gonna wind up and deliver the 0-1 pitch. That one is swung on and missed. So count goes to 0 and 2 now for Holland. Again, Holland looking for her first hit tonight. She's 0 1. So count goes to 0 2. Noble gets the sign. She winds up, delivers the pitch. That one low and away. Count goes to 1 and 2. So Noble looking for her first strikeout. Lopes hitters are very decisive. They like to see the ball, see long counts, work the pitch count up as much as they can. And the one-two pitch. That one swung on and fouled backwards. You hear the cheers from the Lopes fans, Kaylee Holland. Trying to get something going here. So far, zeros on the board for the Lopes. And the one-two pitch is underway. That one is ripped right back up the middle. Good enough for a base hit. Zufelt goes to second base. Holland goes to first. So a nice piece of hitting on a one-two count to drive that ball up the middle. 
Back to pass, back to back base hits there for the Lopes. Just a nice little, like we mentioned, just trying to chip away at that lead slowly. Absolutely, and sometimes it's the little things that can get a spark going just like that. A little bit of small ball, nothing wrong with that at all. As that is now going to bring up Fifield, the second baseman, the left handed hitting freshman. And it looks like we might even see a brand new pitcher here for Utah. So the Utah State Aggies are going to take out Alyssa Noble, who had herself a nice little outing today. And it looks like they are going to bring in Capri Toon, the right-handed pitching sophomore out of Trent, Tremonton, Utah, from Bear River High School. Looks like she's going to see a little bit of action today on the bump, come in for relief. As we got a runner on second and first. And no outs here in the top of the fourth. If you're just joining us now, Utah State Aggies lead 5-0 over the Grand Canyon University Antelopes here on this Friday night. First day, kickoff day of the GCU Purple Classic Tournament. GCU dropped one earlier to Drake. As did Utah State, lost to California State University Northridge earlier today. Lopes looking to break that now five game losing streak after that loss earlier today. They're in a little bit of a slump, but if you're going to be in a slump, better to be in that earlier in the season than later before conference play starts. Get all those kinks out. So nothing wrong. Still a lot of hopes for the season. A lot of good promises, a lot of good uh, potential here. Some great players, great coaching staff for the Lopes. Now pitching for Utah State, number 33, Capri Toon. So Capri Toon is going to be the brand new pitcher for Utah State, as mentioned. Second baseman, She's going to get ready to go, go to battle against second baseman Kristen Fifield for the Lopes. And the 0-0 pitch outside for a strike. So count 0-1, we're going to run her on first and second for the Lopes with no outs. Fifield, a very great freshman with a very decisive hitter. Bouncing around between shortstop and second base. Finally found a little bit of a home the last couple games at second base. Tries to lay down that one and just couldn't get that bunt to lay down, so... Count's going to go to 0 and 2. So the 0 2 pitch is almost underway. She gets her sign, winds up, pitch to five field. That one's on the corner a little bit outside. Ball. Ball one, count goes to one and two. Utah State fans did not like that one. But Fifield, a very decisive hitter, decided that one wasn't for her. Capri Toon for the Utah State Aggies had herself a nice year so far, 1.02 ERA, six appearances, 12 strikeout, one two pitch. That one is hit deep, it is hit high, but it is caught by the left fielder, McFarland. Makes herself a nice routine catch there. Sue felt thought about tagging there from second, but as she saw McFarland, a little too close there. Didn't want to risk getting another out. That was Maisie McFarland out there in left field. Twin sister Mackenzie McFarland is catcher. And that pitch swung on right to the center fielder, Sidney Reed. That was Gianna Nicoletti for the Lopes. Swung on that first pitch, and now we're quickly at a two outs, runner on the third base base. second Number five. and first. 
And that's going to bring up third baseman, number five, Kaylee Dietrich, the junior. Right-handed batter. Had herself a nice game earlier against Drake. A couple of really good defensive plays. First pitch to her is up. And it's going to be in there for a strike. Let's count now. 0-1-1. So Capri Tune delivers this pitch to Dietrich outside. Count goes to one and one. Capri Tune is the one of the top relievers actually for Utah State. Like I said, she's got herself a nice little line here. Oh, 1.02 ERA, .99 WHIP, two wins, zero losses, and that pitch to Dietrich with a little bit of movement on it, but did not break the way she wanted. It was low. Down goes to two and one. With two outs here in the top of the fourth. And the pitch by Toon. Dietrich hits that one right past the diving third baseman. McFarland's going to throw to her other sister, her only sister, I should say, McFarland. One McFarland to the other from left field to home plate. So a good relay from one McFarland to the other. Keeps the lopes at the base is loaded. No one has scored yet. The but that is going to bring up the center six. fielder, Mickey, Mickey Carverubio. Yeah, you saw Zufelt starting to run home and then stopped as she realized that one McFarland to another was... Not what she wanted. <laughs> no, definitely not. It was a lot closer than she thought so smart move by Zufelt staying there at third now with the bases loaded here for the Lopes and the first pitch to Mickey Carverubio was a strike so she's up count is 0-1-1 with two outs and bases loaded as the pitch to her is fouled quickly to 0-2 so Mickey Carverubio she's 0 for 2 so far but don't let that Stat discourage you. She is one of the best freshmen here on the GCU team, leading the team coming into this weekend in batting average. Earned her spot starting in center field. Great. Great batter, great defenders, though. Two pitch to her is cued right to the first baseman. She's going to, right to the pitcher. She's going to flip it right to the first baseman. That's going to end the inning. The Lopes leave three runners, runners stranded. Can't do much with it as after three and a half innings, the score remains 5 nothing in favor of the Utah Aggies. You know, Dom, we, we've been here for a while, and you, you, you need something to keep you energized. Do I? You, you, you do. And you know what? The Lope Shop is proud to carry products from GCBC, the Grand Canyon Beverage Company. Enjoy this tasty line of coffee, tea, and energy drinks from GCU in the comfort of your own home. Now available at lopeshop.gcu.edu slash gcbc. Now my question for you is, yes. if I don't know how to make myself ground coffee, my father would be upset if he yes. did that. Can I use a K-cup? Do they you have can. K-cups? They have K-cups, so if you're just one of those college students who are home and miss the taste of campus, you can order some GCBC K-Cups and just pop that in your Keurig and you are good to go. How about Stampedes? Do they have Stampedes? They sell it in the case. You can get Buy the case. case. You can get a four case of Stampede. Oh, you heard it here first, folks. You can get a four case of Stampede at GCBC online. And if that's not one of the best things ever, I don't know what is. So GCBC now available online. Get yours today. A little taste of campus right in your home. So Lexi Coons is going to remain on the bump as we come back here, and it is bottom of the fourth inning. Aggies lead over the Lopes. Five to nothing. Been pretty dominant in that game, in this game so far. So the Lopes looking to hopefully have a quick inning here. And they can get back up to bat. Yeah, the Lopes have threatened a couple of times, leaving bases loaded twice here and just unable to get any work going on. 
And so they've they've put it in motion, but just not able to cross the plate there. So leading off the fourth for the Aggies, center fielder Stephanie Reed is going to dig in. She's going to go against Lexi Coons. And the first pitch to Reed. That one is swung on. Torville's got it. She's going to kick it a little bit. But she will not be able to come up with it and make a clean throw. So Torville keeping it in front of her, doing a nice job of that. But Sydney Reed's going to go to first. So, so no outs. And a new batter here. Riley Holt. Riley Plogger, excuse me. Riley Plogger, the right fielder, is going to step in. First pitch to her from Coons is a ball. So 1 0 to Plogger. Runner on first base, no outs. And that pitch is a ball. So 2 0. Plogger hitting 243 this season. And in all 11 games, 37 at-bats, scored six runs, a couple doubles, a couple home runs. Not a bad hitter as the pitch to her is right there on the corner for the first strike to Plogger. Count goes to two and one. Two and one and no outs with one runner on for the Aggies. Utah State Aggies feeling very good about their position. The Lopes not wanting them to get comfortable. It's 2-1 pitch. Is outside. Count goes to 3-1. and one. Plogger's now got a nice little hitter's count at 3-1. and one. So Coons, the 3-1 pitch. Inside, it's going to be ball four. Excuse me, so with no outs, quickly there are two base runners here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And that's going to bring up the left fielder, number 15, Maisie McFarlane. She's got herself a 400 average. That's going to bring up, or that's going to be the best for the Aggies on the team. Also has a 486 on base percentage as well. That is... A very good on-base percentage for this young season as the first pitch to her from Coons is a strike. Maisie McFarlane, her sister, Mackenzie, Mc Mackenzie McFarlane, excuse me, is also on this Aggies team. Both very good players, great hitters out of Rockland, California. 0-1 pitch to her outside. Ball one. That goes to 1-1 one and one. out of Whitney High School. Northern California natives. So the 1-1 one, one pitch to McFarland. Outside. That's going to be ball two. Holland checks the runner at second, makes her go back. On deck for the Aggies, we've got Lexi Orozco, the veteran shortstop. And that pitch is in there for a strike, so count goes to two and two. McFarlane is one for two with an RBI. In this, this here ball game. As the two two pitch is delivered, that one swung on chopped foul. McFarlane with a lot of power there. Banging it off the net. So McFarland digs back in. Count is now two and two. Runner on second and first. No outs here in the bottom of the fourth. And the pitch. That uh, one fouled back. Always thankful to have that net there. Absolutely. 
I know that net is there to protect me. I know I have a glass window to protect me, and I will still flinch. Yeah, but there's a hole here. It could very easily come in here. The All I'm saying window. is I stretch. I consider myself a limber guy, but there's no way I would be able to get out of the way of a ball coming in my face. And the 2-2 pitch. That one on the ground. They get the force out at second. So that's going to be a fielder's choice there for McFarlane. Runner on first and third for the Aggies with one out here in the bottom of the fourth. It's going to bring up the shortstop, Lexi Orozco. Lexi Orozco, the sophomore shortstop out of San Marcos, California. Hitting 367 this year. Had a couple home runs. Nine RBIs. So a nice little start to the season for Roscoe. San Marcos native. Lexi Coons. Gonna get a little talking to from her infield, and now she's ready to go. The runner on third and first. One out. Bottom of the fourth. Pitch from Coons to Roscoe. That one inside on the hands, and she pulls that one foul. So 0 and 1. Roscoe waving her bat. The wind up, the pitch. That one down low. Count goes to 1 and 1. Lexi Coons trying to gather herself. Lexi gets the sign, delivers the pitch. High, ball two. And the count is now sitting in two and one with one out. Again, the runner's on third and first. Wouldn't be surprised if the runner on first takes off. Try to see if they can draw the catcher Holland to throw down and allow the runner on third to score. We'll see what happens. And the two one pitch inside, ball three. Right so now, if you're Lexi Coons, you're hoping for a ground ball to get that double play and end this inning here for the Lopes. On deck is Mackenzie McFarland, Maisie McFarland's twin sister. She's waiting to get her hacks. So the 3-1 pitch to Roscoe is in there for a strike. It's going to be a full count here. Roscoe going to have to choke up here a little bit. Lexi Coons doing a great job working herself into the, back into this battle. And the 3-2 pitch. That one popped foul. So count remains 3-2. and two. Again, Mackenzie McFarlane up on the on-deck circle for the Aggies. Roscoe digs back in. Short stop. Right-handed batter. Lexi Coons gets the sign, delivers. That one popped way up. Foul and out of play. So a good little battle here going on between Coons and Orozco. The Orozco found the last couple off. A 3-2 count. So again, full count, one out. Runners on third and first. Orozco digs in. Lexi. Lexi Coons gets the sign, winds up, and the 3-2 pitch. That one rings her up. Caught her looking good pitch there by Lexi Coons to get Orozco and the second out of the inning for the Lopes. So a great pitch by Lexi Coons there. Stuns Orozco. She'll go ahead and have a seat. 
on the bench as Mackenzie McFarlane comes up. So two out and two on here for the Aggies in the bottom of the fourth. Just trying to, Phillips trying to keep the Aggies from adding any more on to their 5-0 lead already. Absolutely. And McFarland, the catcher, first pitch to her. Inside. So Coombs winds up, delivers the 1 0 pitch. That one, a little chopper to third base. Dietrich has it, throws over to Bishop, and that'll end the inning. We completed four innings. The scoring main, so, zero. after four innings, Utah State, five. Utah State leads 5-0 to zero over the Lopes. Don't go anywhere. We got more softball right here. But we already have the best student section in the whole country. I know, I know, but what can we do to take this thing to the next level? Guys. I think I've got an idea. Whoa. They ain't gonna get any better than that. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are going to come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security and most importantly that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Welcome back. Thank you so much for not going anywhere and sticking with us as we head to the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, I've Here. got some uh, late night softball going on for you. The time is 10.21 p.m. It's a beautiful evening, beautiful night for softball here at GCU in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona, at the GCU Softball Stadium. Dom, would you say it's a beautiful weekend for softball? It's a beautiful weekend for softball as we have the GCU Purple Classic Tournament. That is what you are watching. That's what you will be watching all weekend as we go to the top of the fifth and leading off for GCU, right fielder number four, Jaden Reed. So Reed digs in and the first pitch to her is outside. It's gonna be a ball. Reed along with Fellow freshman Mickey Covarubio earned a spot on the Getterman Classic All-Tournament team for the performance in Texas last weekend. So Reed really picking it up in the start of the season, earning herself a nice starting spot in right field. And second pitch to her is in there for a strike. Now goes to one and one. Capri Toon is still on the hill for the Utah State Aggies. Right-handed pitcher out of Tremonton, Utah. She's going to get the sign, deliver the 1-1 pitch. That one is fouled back. Count goes to 1-2. and two. No counts, 1-2, and two. no outs. Pitch to Reed, that one is slapped. And a great play by the center fielder. Sidney Reed to make that catch on the run and retire. Retire Reed. So Reed gets retired by Reed. Believe it or not. And we have one out here in the top of the fifth. But that's gonna bring up the first baseman, number 27, Lily Bishop. Hard-hitting right-hander, a junior. 
hit a home run in the game earlier today against Drake. I went outside. Willie Bishop, a native of Riverside, California. Right-handed batter with lots of power and some pretty solid defensive work at first base as we've seen today. And the 1-0 pitch to her. That one is going to be skied. And Orozco has it. It's going to be the second out for the Lopes. Lopes have uh, been having somewhat of a two-out rally, so let's see if they can Number do the same thing here. Now with uh, Torfield up to bat. And that's going to bring up the sophomore, Savannah Torville. The shortstop. She's 0 for 2 today, looking for her first hit. That pitch is outside, ball one. Torville, a first team all whack in the 2019 season. And before this 2020 season was picked in the preseason all whack team. So a big season ahead for her. Already done some great things as though 1 0 pitch to her is skied, and that's going to be the second baseman. Holmes is going to retire, and that's going to be a three up, three down inning for the Lopes as we head to the bottom of the fifth. Well, you know, uh, there's currently a lot of people visiting the GCU campus with this tournament going on and all the other games going on that we have. And you know, if you're visiting the campus this spring, why not stay at the GCU Hotel? Featuring comfortable rooms, a resort-style pool, the Canyon 49 Grill, it's a perfect place to stay when coming to GCU. Book a room today at gcuhotel.com. And I'll tell you what here, Cheyenne. Yeah. My mother, Mrs. Hinton, mm -hmm. is a big, big stickler when it comes to hotels. She holds hotels in high regard. Uh -huh. And when we have stayed at the GCU Hotel, she loves it. Great experience every time. $79 Passes her. per night. Exactly. Like, you really can't beat it. And you know what else? I got to say it. Are you going to Are you going to tell me what I think you're going to tell me? I, I think this is so. Do you know what else besides the amazing Canyon 49 Grill is at the GCU Hotel? Are you going to tell me GCBC? I'm going to tell you GCBC. There you go. So, folks, if you come to visit campus, you can have a taste of campus before you even set foot on GCBC campus with GCBC inside the Canyon 49 Grill inside the GCU Hotel. Again, only $70 per night. It meets the Mrs. Hinton stamp of approval for hotels. So that should say something. And if you're a student, you can use your dining dollars at the GCBC or at Canyon 49. So pluses all around for the GCU Hotel. A great place to say when visiting the heart of Phoenix. And speaking of the heart of Phoenix, we're going to bring you right back here to GCU Stadium at the bottom of the fifth inning as the Aggies lead 5-0 over the Lopes. Lexi Kuhn still on the mount for the Lopes. And a uh, pinch hitter for the Aggies in Bria Lerma. And the first pitch to her is going to be a strike. The 0-1 pitch, that one is a bit high for a ball. And the 1-1 pitch, that one just a bit high and outside, ball two. So the pinch hitter, Bree Lerma, appeared in a couple games so far for Utah State. The pitch to her, she's going to pop that one up. Lily Bishop is there for it. For the first out in the bottom of this fifth inning. So one out, no runners on. And that's going to bring up first baseman. Kennedy Hira, excuse me for that one. 
Kennedy here are the first baseman for the Aggies. First pitch to her in there for a strike. Kennedy Hira, the junior out of Mission Vallejo, California, from San Juan Capistrano Valley High School. Another California kid as that pitch to her is fouled out of play. There seems to be a lot of us anywhere we go. You really just can't escape these California kids. You, you really can't. There's two on the broadcast right now. Yeah. I can't everywhere. stand those kids. I know. They're, they're horrible. I mean, some are good. But, I mean, you know. You know. You know. Well, I do know that Lexi Coons just got the sign. She's going to deliver the 0-2 pitch, and that's high. Count's going to go to 1-2. and two. One out here, no runners on, bottom of the fifth inning. And the 1-2 pitch. That one shallow, caught by Fifield. Making a nice little catch right there at second base. Nice catch running up there for Fifield. So, so far, two up, two down for Coons. Good little inning. As we got no one on. And two outs. And the pitch by Coons. That one slapped foul. Ryan Holmes is the batter. The second baseman, senior out of Queen, Queen Creek, Arizona. Local gal. Getting ready to do something here for the Aggies. She's got an 0-1 count on her. As Coons delivers the 0-1 pitch. That one outside. Counts 1-1. One one. So Coons delivers the 1-1 one one pitch. That one a little bit high. Holmes lays off of it. Count goes to two and one. And that pitch is in there. Going to be ball three. So counts three and one now. No runners on, two outs. And that pitch is going to hit her. Holmes is going to shake that off. She's going to walk to first. So a free base for Holmes. Don't think Lexi Coons meant to hit her there. She kind of slipped out. Ran a little bit too inside. Holmes is going to walk it off down there in the first base line. So there's going to be a little bit of a meeting on the mount between the players of GCU as Holmes walks off that hit by pitch. I'm sure it stung a little bit. But she's walking around. She seems good as she returns to first base. Umpire's going to come out and break this meeting up a little bit. And, and we're going to have a pinch hitter here for Utah State. Number 21, Leah Molina from Mesa, Arizona. A graduate of Desert Ridge High School. The 
Jr. Outfielder is going to dig in. And the first pitch to her is slapped foul. So count 0-1 for Molina with one on on first base, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Coon's just trying to get that last out to get the Lopes out of the inning right now. Got those uh, first two outs quickly with that runner now on first. And that one is chopped right up the middle. No one's going to be able to get it, so that's a single there for Molina, the pinch hitter. And we've got two on and two out here in the bottom of the fifth. And that's going to bring up Stephanie Reed. The out center fielder, the center fielder for the Aggies. She's going to come on with two on and two out here. It's Lexi Koontz continues to pitch away. And the first pitch inside. That's going to get away from Holland as both runners are going to advance. You now have runners at third and second with two out. And a 1-0 count here to read. And that pitch is drilled up the middle. It's bobbled by the center fielder, Micker Rubio. Two runs are going to score. As the umpire comes out. Two runs have scored. Score now goes to seven to nothing in favor of the Aggies. That was a great hit there by Reed. Driving in two runs right up the middle. Mick Rubio bobbled a little bit, allowed the second run to score. And the Aggies lead seven to nothing. So still uh, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. The Aggies just adding those two runs. So Coons just really trying to get out of this inning here. As that first pitch is fouled off on an awkward check swing there. Count goes to 0-1. Riley Plogger, the right fielder of Redlands, California, senior, is up to bat. Had herself a nice game. Plogger has had a nice season so far, 243 batting average. As that pitch to her is outside, count goes to 1-1. One one. So 1-1 one one's the count. One on, first base, two outs. Bottom of the fifth, two runs just scored. Utah State leads 7 to nothing. Coons waiting for the sign. Gets the sign, lines up, delivers the 1-1 pitch. That one slapped the other way. Going to be a base hit there for Plogger. So Riley Plogger on first. Got a runner on second for Utah State. Two on, two out. And that's going to bring up Maisie McFarlane, a hard-hitting outfielder out of Rockland, California. Maisie McFarlane, 400 team best batting average coming into this tournament. 14 hits on this young season, a couple of three doubles actually, a home run, a couple of RBIs. 571 slugging percentage, so a very dangerous hitter. Runner in scoring position here for Utah State. Maisie McFarley, the pitch. That one, a strike. First pitch to McFarland. Sister Mackenzie McFarland is the catcher for this UT, Utah State Aggies team. McFarland duo. Wreaking some havocs on the Lopes. And the 0-1 pitch. High. And a heads up play at second base there. Allows the runner to advance to third. So a stolen base there. Just caught them flat footed. Advances the runner to third. So McFarland takes strike two. 
Count one and two, runner on third and first. Two outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Marlon also has four walks on the season. Only struck out four times. We make it a fifth. That one's outside. Holland does a nice job of checking the runner at third. So it counts two, two, and two. Two runners on. Triple twos here. Alexi Coons trying to end this inning, limit the damage. The pitch, that one fouled back by McFarland. So McFarland trying to get one she can hit. Score that runner from third. This game, the Utah State Hitters have really picked apart the GCU pitchers so far. And that one, right in the glove of Kaylee Dietrich to end the inning. So at the end of at the end of five innings, the score is now Utah State seven, GCU zero. So GCU will get their at bats as they strand, as Utah State strands two at the end of five. Don't go anywhere, because we will be right back. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers, and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. So, welcome back to GCU Stadium. If you're just joining us, we are in the top of the sixth inning. That pitch is outside and called for a strike. We're in the top of the sixth inning with the GCU Lopes trading, trailing the Utah State Aggies seven to nothing. Olivia Zufelt, freshman from Hayden, Idaho. The 0-1 count. And that one is slapped the other way, but Nice Caught. catch there by Plogger running up to get that hit. Kind of hit no man's land, so nice uh, athleticism, athleticism there from Plogger. And we have really seen all of the Utah State Aggies outfielders on their feet, moving around, making great catches, really backing up their pitcher all game, not letting a lot go by them or even hit the ground, really. As Kaylee Holland, the catcher, Stands in. First pitch to her was a strike. And second pitch to Kaylee Holland. She skies that one in no man's land. And the center fielder Stephanie Reed comes in, makes that little sliding catch. Again, just like we say, all the all the outfielders have been on their wheel. They've been moving and made a great catch there, kind of in no man's land behind second base. You see her go into a little bit of a slide. And that gives GCU two outs here now in the top of the sixth. As that is Fifield, the second baseman. The right-handed hitting junior stepping in. First pitch was a strike to her. Count is now 0-1-1 with two outs. Nobody on. Second pitch to Fifield. 
That one. She slaps that one the other way. But again, outfielder on her horse was able to catch that one. That was McFarlane. Two end the inning. So three up, three down for the Lopes. Score still remains 7 to nothing in favor of the Utah State Aggies. Don't go anywhere. And you know why you shouldn't go anywhere? <clears throat> because you can get the best gear to show off your Lope pride and go to lopeshop.gcu.edu to find everything GCU. From the newest apparel to the coolest accessories, use promo code GCUTV25 to get 25% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Let's paint the valley purple. Lopes up. So if I if I heard you correctly, yes, that means if you use that code just for watching, you get 25% off. That Can you use that for anything? Nice. Anything. Anything at all, including some GCBC of coffee. Of course. I knew that that was going to be the lead up there. It, it's got to be. I mean. So you heard in our last little spiel in between innings that you can get GCU coffee online from GCBC. And now, just for watching us, and you use our code GCUTV25, you can get 25% off. So the perfect opportunity to try out some GCU coffee before you even come to campus. That, that's going to seal the deal for anyone who's considering coming to GCU, trying the GCBC coffee. That's what's going to seal the deal and make you want to come to GCU even more. Well, I've decided I'm never going to graduate just because – Just just, just for the GCBC, have GCBC coffee. GCBC. Yeah, absolutely. So, sounds day. like a good plan. Who needs two adults? That's, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. But what I'm also saying is right here, it's the bottom of the sixth inning here at GCU Stadium. Lexi Coons is on the mount. And uh, number five, T Tyler Thornton is pinch hitting. The freshman out of Millville, Utah. And the first pitch there was a strike. Lexi Coons winds up the 0-1 pitch. That one fouled. Quickly 0-2. So nobody on, nobody out. Two strikes for Thornton. As Lexi Coons winds up, the 0-2 pitch. That went high. Good job by Holland there, wrangling it in, getting up. Oh, count goes to one and two. And the one-two pitch, inside and high. Now it goes to two and two. So the utility player pinch hitting for Roscoe, who's had an excellent game at shortstop for the Aggies. And that pitch, oh, just a bit inside. Looked like a good pitch to miss there. Your Lexi Coons count goes to full three and two. Nobody on, nobody out. And that one was good enough to ring her up. Lexi Coons caught her looking and put that as a backward strikeout. Backwards K for Lexi Coons. Well, Thornton goes down looking, and we have one out here in the bottom of the sixth. And that's going to bring up pinch hitter for Utah State, number 20, Kayla Fielder, the junior, out of League City, Texas. And first pitch to her is outside. That's a ball. So 1-0, one, oh, one out. Tomorrow, GCU facing Drake, facing Utah State again in this and that pitch in their first strike. Count goes to one and one. So tomorrow we'll start up day two of this GCU Purple Classic Tournament. 
As we've said, a lot of softball all weekend. A lot of softball, a lot of baseball. Some basketball mixed some basketball, in there. Some volleyball. Some volleyball. Men's volleyball mixed in. And that pitch just missed for ball two. You know, the GCU men's volleyball team beat number eight UCLA earlier in four sets. That's, I heard that. That's yeah. incredible. That's big for the program, absolutely. You love to see that. You love to see all GCU teams winning. And in fact, a 2-1 pitch. That one fouled and caught by Kaylee Dietrich. A great play. Kaylee mm -hmm. Dietrich on her horse, running up to make that catch in foul territory. Cheyenne, like you were saying, a lot of stuff going on this weekend, a lot of sports. We decided that wasn't enough. Why not mix in a little worship conference, TEDx, always a lot of things going on right now always at GCU. For everyone. And all everything here at GCU everything, TV. Everything here from us at GCU TV. So two outs and a hit by a pitch. That's Bree Lerma. She's going to take that base. Lexi Coons lost a little control there. Time is now 10.50 p.m. Friday, February 21st. Beautiful night here in Phoenix, Arizona. So Lexi Coombs delivers the first pitch. And that one's on the ground. Savannah Turville's got it. Makes the throw. Lily Bishop has it at first base. So that's going to be an easy play right there. So Utah State unable to tack on anything else. After six full innings of play, Utah State still ahead. Seven to nothing. Don't go anywhere because we got the top of the seventh inning next on GCU TV. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! Across the green desert To where the mountains touch the sky This is Sanderson Ford country Where Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford country Built on serving you Sanderson Ford Satisfaction in everything we do We're Arizona's pride Sanderson Ford And welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking with us. If you're just now tuning in, it is the top of the seventh inning. The Lopes of Grand Canyon University are down to the Aggies of Utah State University. Seven runs to nothing here in the top of the seventh. As that one is slapped foul, count goes to 0 1. That's Gianna Nicoletti, who's one for two, the sophomore left-hander, playing left field tonight, up for the Lopes. Lopes have uh, Nicoletti, Dietrich, and Cavarubio up for them here in the bottom seven. Excuse me, top of the seventh, as the Lopes are the designated home team here right now. And that one is right to the second baseman, who's going to flip it to first. And easy first out for the Aggies. So, top of the seventh. One out, nobody on. And that's going to bring uh, Kaylee Dietrich. With the freshman, Mickey Covarubio, on deck. So, the first pitch to Kaylee Dietrich is underway. Oh, and that's a good pitch right there, off speed for a strike. He 
Dietrich digs in. And the pitch. That one right on the outside corner for a strike. So count goes to 0-2, one out, nobody, nobody on. Top of the seventh. Lobes uh, down to their final two outs here. And Capri Toon, who's been amazing all season so far for the Utah State Owies, throws that one. Counts out one and two, try to get Dietrich chasing. And that one outside. Count now goes to two and two. So the count is two and two. One out, nobody on. That pitch to Dietrich outside. Count is now full. So the full count pitch, that one is skied by Dietrich. And playable, McFarland in the outfield, runs up, makes the catch. Maisie McFarland in the outfield. Lopes now down to their final out here in the top of the seven. So their last hope for something is the center fielder, the freshman, Mickey Covarubio, a left-handed batter. So the first pitch to Mickey Carver-Rubio is in there for a strike. So top of the seventh inning, Lopes down to their final out. Count is 0-1, nobody on, two outs. And that one is grounded to second base. She's going to throw to first, and that will do it. Foot was on the bag. That's going to be the third and final out of the game. Unfortunately, the Lopes fall to Utah State 7 to nothing. So that's going to do it for them. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And thanks for tuning in to the Purple Classic. We've got Lopes softball all weekend, as we've been mentioning. And our next game is tomorrow afternoon against Drake. Go ahead and tune in at 3 p.m. right here on GCU TV for that. Follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash GCU. Have a great night and go Lopes.